chapter six. So here we go. <laughs> you know the drill. <laughs> if you haven't read chapter six already, we're going to pause and give you time to do so. And then we're going to come back and then we're going to dive into it. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> all right. Six, all of this stuff is good. I'm, I'm partial to the word of God. So all of it's good, right? Um, so let's go ahead and dive into it, right? Let's, let's take a Get a couple of nuggets out of this one, right? Okay, first, the first thing we see in verse one, where it says, we, we're talking about the debts of our friends again, right? Here we go. It says, my son, if you have put security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands and a pledge for a stranger, you have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands. Go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. This is like, yo, hey man, I put I put a I put my word in for you, man. Hey, I signed it. Hey man, remember this is coming against me. Like this is this is why. Listen, this is why we can't be responsible for other people's debts. Can, can I can I go a little deeper in that? Can I can I go a little deeper in that? Okay. We can't feel responsibility for other people's actions. Hmm. How many times have you probably gave somebody some advice and they didn't take it, right? And it led them down a different or a dark road until they had to get some consequences or some things. And you felt bad, like, man, did I tell them to do the wrong thing? I know I told them to do the wrong thing. Why can't, well, I don't understand what's going on. Did I fail? It's like, no, you told them what truth was. You gave them wisdom and they went down the road that they chose. We're not responsible, we're not responsible for other people's actions. Right. So so in turn, also, too, sometimes we're not we're not responsible for other people's debts. I'm, I'm going to tell you this. And I've learned this in leadership um, that. When you when when you give somebody wisdom, OK, you're not responsible for what they do with. It. You're not responsible for what they do with it. You give them truth. You give them wisdom and they have to make their own decisions in life. So if you've given somebody wisdom or direction and you feeling bad or the way because it didn't go the way that you probably told them to go and they didn't do the thing that you asked them to do, take that weight off of you. You're not responsible for other people's actions. We're not supposed to sign those documents right, of their debt. So get, take, take that off of you. Take that weight off of you. Man, this 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 chapter is, is rich in some things also too, right? So let, let's go to four, right? It says, allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Now, hold on. Listen, it's not saying don't you ever sleep, <laughs> okay? It's not saying like don't ever rest, right? Because it says, uh, you know, the blessings of God add no sorrow. Right, they add no sorrow to us. This thing is saying, yo, when it's time to work, work. Like, don't waste time. Don't sit there. You know what? Don't procrastinate. <laughs> like, when there's something to be done, don't say I'll wait till tomorrow. Don't say I'll wait five minutes from now. Let's get it done. Matter of fact, th this chapter gives us a great example of the smallest thing that we can really think of. Right? It's the smallest thing that can carry like. I think it's like five or more times their weight, right? In verse six, right? Let's go there. It says, look at the ant. This, I mean, this Bible's ill, right? It says, you sluggard, <laughs> right? Like that, like, like, look at the ant, you sluggard, right? You lazy bones, right? Some, some versions say you lazy bones. It says, consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no overseer. No ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gather its food at harvest. 
right here is telling us, yo, there's a time to work, there's a time to plant, and there's a time to harvest. There's a time to work, there's a time to toil, and there's a time to enjoy the spoils. See, this is the thing, we, we, we live in such a hustle culture right now, right? I'm hustling, I'm hustling, I'm out here hustling, I don't get no sleep, I don't get no this, I don't get no that, I don't get no... Yes, there is a call to work, right? Listen here. Yes, there is a call to work, but there is also a call to harvest. There's a call to rest. There's a call to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Right? All work and no play makes people very grumpy and bitter. <laughs> right? But it's saying, look at the ant, man. It, it has no ruler. It has no so sometimes there, you know, we 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 have to do things that we don't want to do until we can get to do things that we want to do. We have to do something called the process again. We cannot skip the process. He's saying, look into the look at the ant, man. It goes through this process. It, it feels that there's a time. It knows that there's a certain time that certain things happen. So they work hard at this time so they can rest in this time. This, this is to young people, man. You in your 20s, yo, you in your 20s, early 30s or whatever, yo, that ain't the time to be partying. That's the time to be working. That's the time to be working. That's the time to be sowing. That's the time to be planting. So by the time you in your 40s and your 50s, you chilling. You are eating off the fruits of your labor. That's the time, the 20s, 30s, that's the time to discipline. That's the time to figure out what you really want to do in life. That's the time to really know who you are, to really hit it hard, to really hit the ground running. Now, that's hard to take in, but I wish somebody would have told me that. Right, but right here, we look at the ant. And the ant is just showing us that there's a time to work and there's a time to reap. Ten, it says a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. This is crazy to me. It says poverty will come on you like a thief. Like poverty will sneak up on you and you won't even know it because you know what? It's been lurking there all the time. And by the time it catches up to you, scarcity comes with it and it comes like an armed man. Scarcity is a thing that holds you down because guess what? If you don't have it, you ain't got it. Yes, I use wrong English. <laughs> and it holds you hostage. Scarcity holds you hostage to somebody else because they got what you need. Ooh, here we go. We got to discipline ourselves to do what we don't want to do sometimes to get what we're going to need for tomorrow. When we do that, we can't be held down by scarcity. We can't be held down like an armed man because guess what? We got the arms now. It says we're supposed to be the lender, not the borrowers. We're supposed to be above and not beneath. But guess what? I'm going to tell you something. It takes work. It takes sacrifice. It takes discipline. It takes diligence. It takes be, it takes sitting there and eating cereal when you want to go out to the restaurant. It takes sitting there wearing your shoes for a longer period of time, even though Jays come out every month. It's going to take you having the iPhone 13 and it's five years down the line and they came with five different models by then. Because you have a plan. But that's the thing too. You have to make a plan. See, the ants have a plan. The ants know that it's going to be a winter and it's going to be a summer. Can I tell you that? We know that in our lives too. You know when there's a winter. and You know the seasons where they come. You know what you're going to need from now. And we need to make a plan. I heard the, the great Miles Monroe, he said this quote. He said, he said once you figure out what you want to do, Life becomes easy because everything that doesn't align with where you're going, it's easy to throw to the side. If it doesn't align with what you're going, throw it to the side. I don't care if it's, if it's people, throw them to the side. If it's a place, throw it to the side. If it's a thing, throw it to the side. We as the people of Christ following Jesus have 
to start to discipline ourselves a little better. We have to start to discipline ourselves a little better. So that in the time of scarcity, we can have the things that people need and we won't be held down, like this say, by scarcity, like an armed man will be free in Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to take a couple of, look at a couple of other scriptures, right? Let's go to 612, okay? 12. It says a troublemaker and a villain, okay? A troublemaker, right? It, it's, it describes a scoundrel. It's, it's, so it, it uses this term, right? It's a man of Belial, right? And that's a term that came to be used of the devil himself. So when we're talking right now, it says a troublemaker and a villain. We're talking about the devil himself. We're talking about a troublemaker and a villain. We got to remember, see, we don't, we don't war against people. Ah, here we go. We don't war against people. The Bible says we don't war against flesh and blood, but powers and principalities that rule the air, right? We're, 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 we're ruling against an entity that is taking over a person. See, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to fight each other so we won't fight him. So right now we're talking about a troublemaker. We're talking about the enemy who goes about with a corrupt mouth. Remember in chapter five, we were talking about speech. We're about to go in there, okay? It says, who winks maliciously with his eye signals his feet and motions with his fingers who plots evil with deceit in his heart he always stirs up conflict yo check this out i done dicks done some deep diving right so it says in 613 right it talks about winking check this out right wink is a, it's a signal right it's a motion so this was common in the east right for, for fearing detection and to hide intentions the deceiver spoke lies to the victim while giving signals with his eyes, hands and feet to someone else who was in on the deception to carry out the action. That's crazy, right? <laughs> so you sitting there alone, there's somebody out there and they, they talking to you and they winking and they moving their hands a certain way and everybody is in on the plot except you. But this is what wisdom does. Wisdom's, wisdom awakens you to the plot of the enemy. Wisdom awakens you to the enemy's schemes and plans. Wisdom gives you an insight that nobody else can see but you. It's crazy, right? Let's go to 616. This is, this is awesome, too. It says, there are six things the Lord hates. Yes, the Lord does hate. Mm. If he loves, there has to be a hate, right? Six things he hates. And it says seven that are detestable to him. Let's run them down. Haughty eyes. Me wanting something that somebody else got. Me wanting something that somebody else. Me comparing myself to somebody else saying they don't deserve that. I do. I do more than them. And nah, 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 nah. That is haughty eyes. He said he hates that. Right? A lying tongue. Woo! Let's not even go too much on that one, okay? A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Feet that are quick to rush to evil. A false witness who pours out lies. And a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Do you know why? All of, Do you know the one thing that all of this causes? And he said, confusion. All of those things call confusion. And God says, I'm not a God of confusion. He says he gives us peace and a sound mind. All of these things create confusion. And God is not in confusion. Wisdom gives you a wisdom gives you a lens to recognize the ingredients to confusion right wisdom allows you to see that like you know you might be sitting there somebody might be lying right and you're like ah that's not too bad but then here we come somebody backbiting it's like oh then we have somebody comparison oh then we have somebody complaining oh then we have somebody it's like oh wait wait wait, wait. I, I know the ingredients of this one 
I know what this leads to. So know what? Guess what? I'm going to remove myself from this because this is not, to stay here is not wise because I know that the ending of this will turn me into something that I'm not or it will draw, it will it will push me to do an action or actions that are not wise. Wisdom, wisdom does that. And from 19 going on, it talks about the immoral woman again, right? It talks about the adulteress. It talks about sleeping with another man's wife. And basically, he, he, he ain't going to want nothing but blood, <laughs> right? Like, he's not going to take compensation for that. So again, we're talking about us staying with our wives and women staying with their husbands. And also, too, not lusting after something that's not yours. Right? Because we, we might say, oh, man, we, we love this. But if you're betrothed to somebody else, that's not love. That's lust. Because you're already betrothed to somebody. And it, check this out. If this keeps... Repeating, that means that this is something that God really wants to double down on, right? He really wants to double down on this sexual immoral sin. You know what I mean? It's not saying that you can't talk to people. It's saying don't have intercourse. Don't be intimate with these people. Don't be intimate with a wife or a man or a woman that is not your husband or your wife that is not your spouse, because that can lead into feelings that are not true. That can lead you down a long road. And it's the same thing, too. It's like, don't flirt with these other things that are not of God, because that can lead you away from him and take you down a road to destruction. Because, again, like I said in the previous video, God has your best interest at heart, and we need to run to him because he loves us. And he wants nothing but the best for us. And we have a part to play in that. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. So Father, we thank you. And we ask you to give us a spirit of diligence. A spirit to, to help us, give us power to override this spirit of laziness. This, this spirit of procrastination the spirit of being lethargic in things. Father, we thank you that you're going to give us a spirit of, of diligence again. This is the word that's just in my heart, of diligence, of persistence, of execution, of, of steadfastness in the seasons when it's time to work. And Father, also to give us a time of rest where we can recoup and we can enjoy things that you have allowed us to have while we're here so that we can have a life of balance we can have a life of joy and we can have a life full of you so we thank you again father and you're so good in jesus name i do pray amen again i want to thank you guys for coming to join us and we're going to see you again tomorrow these 31 days of wisdom. Love you guys.